What an amazing man he is. Kindness that's just unparalleled, a sense of humor, a wit, just a lovely, lovely person. There was nobody that was untouched by John's amazing being. He loves his patients. Wherever they are, whatever color or creed they are, and he goes to the places where they need him absolutely the most. Really, he, uh, he was a man who was even larger than his reputation. Dr. Goodell is, uh, for me, a fantastic clinician, uh, a great mentor, and uh, a philanthropist uh, who's uh, dedicated to making lives of children better. I was born in Saskatoon. Medicine at that time seemed awfully expensive. And so what I finally did was when I went to University of Alberta, I took a year of engineering. And uh, I did all right after that. And then people said, well, if you really want medicine, why don't you do it? So I took my pre-med and, and med at the University of Alberta. And then I interned at the Walter McKenzie Center. The interest that our professors had in, in us as students, we really learned from them. We really learned. My wife, Marjorie, was a, an education student. She was one of the sopranos in the chorus. At the time of the mixed chorus concert, she was selling tickets. So after a few minutes talking and chatting, we went for a coffee. And that started the whole thing. Then just after I finished my training, I got a phone call to say that there was an opening in Nigeria. We decided, well, what are we going to do? Because we had six kids by this kid in time. So they all went with us. So what I was doing is teaching pediatrics at the university. All of a sudden, you're seeing illnesses that you've never seen before and much more severe. Uh, I mean, it, to see a bed with four or five newborns all convulsing with tetanus or having a, an epidemic of measles where you got a 30% mortality and that kind of thing. That uh, really shook me up. I think one of his uh, proudest ex um, accomplishments was at Children's Hospital in Tunisia. He established that and uh, ran it very successfully for several years before he came back to, to Canada. At that time, I, I sort of developed my philosophy of, of external aid. We had to have counterparts. I wanted to leave something. And uh, so for every Canadian that we had, we uh, talked the hospital into giving us counterparts, nurses and that sort of thing. And things are still going strong, even after, well, 30 years. He was absolutely perfect for work in a developing country because he would go there to a place where they don't have CT scanners and MRI machines and yet be able to share the best of his clinical skills with young African students. And he's so well known now even in, in Uganda because generations of students there have come through the system having known Professor Godel. We know that at the grassroots level in Uganda there will be a life saved virtually every night through all these community healthcare workers that had its roots in the work that uh, John has done. Dr. Goodell uh, began uh, his visits to the north. But he went up for something like 25 years and visited all the small communities. So he went to places like Norman Wells, Fort Good Hope, Paklavik, Taktayaktak, also held clinics in the Inuvik Hospital. It was while I was going up there that I suddenly realized, you know, there are a lot of problems uh, with teeth, there are problems with bones. Particularly vitamin D and also uh, anemia amongst infants. Uh, and he ended up publishing a paper recognizing what we call the Northern Infant Syndrome, but basically children who have respiratory illnesses, uh, who have vitamin D deficiency and rickets. And to see how warmly John was received and how well respected he was, was incredible. It was just um, magic to watch him interacting with patients. He's been sometimes an irritating son of a gun, 
but in the main, very, very fine to live with. He's, he's really quite easy. And I can't imagine a better husband to have through all these years. It's been great.